Bang, we're going. Welcome everybody to uh, today's webinar on how to sell your own listings four times more often. And I'm gonna check and make sure we're recording and we are, everything is good. So I'm gonna go into the deck in a moment. And I, um, uh, before I do, I wanna tell you that I believe this is the second most important webinar I've ever done. I really mean that the second most important webinar I've ever done. The number one webinar was uh, always will be on how to list more properties because inventory is everything. And inventory has always been important. It's always been critical. I will tell you having inventory is no longer just important. It's no longer just critical. It's essential. Those without listing inventory are not going to just not prosper, they are not going to survive. So that's always my number one webinar whenever I'm doing one on how to list more property. Um, those are the ones you wanna to watch. Today though, second most important webinar I've ever done because as you'll see from my slide deck, some of the things I'm gonna float out to you, being able to monetize your own listings, being able to sell more of your own listings is clearly something you're going to need to be able to do to prosper in the future of real estate. So we're gonna get started, but before I do, I'm going to just mention that last week, I had a lot of comments because I wore a uh, my dad's cufflinks. Well, this week I am wearing my dad's other cufflinks these are, I mean, these are like 50, 60 years old, really special to me. My dad was amazing. He started with nothing, high school education. Um, he had no connections, was a World War II fighter pilot instructor and got out uh, after the war, married my mom and went into real estate, just selling real estate and just, just worked like crazy. I've written a lot about that. Had a lot of success, built a rocking real estate firm in Cincinnati, Ohio. He's the one that got me started and taught me the foundation of real estate. And so I love to kind of wear his stuff to bring back memories of uh, what a difference he made in my life. And for those of you that don't know, I wrote about my dad in my book on fathering called How Fathers Change Lives. You can find that on Amazon. Also, most of those stories are on my website, my fathering website, SavvyDad.com. So here are my dad's web, uh, these are his diamond cufflinks, I'll hold those up. So this is just for you, dad, I love you. I know you're looking down and you're smiling. You're proud of all the real estate mavericks out there. So let's get started today and here we go. Let me get the deck. The deck is on and this is how to sell. And we're going to blast through this deck. This is going to be a rocking webinar. Uh, you guys are going to get a ton of great information and you're going to get it like rapid fire. Uh, there's going to be a lot of resources here that um, in the webinar can't really go into depth in these resources. You know, um, we've added actually something to our free resources. So you can always email Jen, J-E-N-N, -N, at realestatemavericks.com if you'd like copies of past webinars and some of the resources that we have on virtually everything, and that's free. We're just happy to give those to you. Also, something we've started doing, uh, a, let's see, two weeks ago, and that is that we will do, I have a big enough team now that we will do half hour calls with you to teach you some of the things that we talk about in the webinars. If you have individual questions, we get so many questions by email now and by text message uh, that if you would like to have that half hour with us, uh, go to our, um, our, what we call our, our uh, website where we present what we teach, this business in a box that we teach. You do not have to sign up for that. You can simply go to 990agent.com, 990agent.com, and down at the bottom, you'll see where you can sign up for a half hour with one of our Maverick trainers. You uh, And we'll basically answer any questions you have. You do not have to buy training. You do not have to buy the 990 program. Uh, we'll simply spend a half hour on the phone with you, and we'll be glad to help you with anything that's troubling you in your professional, <laughs> maybe even your personal life. We do a lot of that. I'm not sure we're that good at that, but anything you want to know. So you can go to 990agent.com. You have any questions, we'll be glad to schedule a time and help you out. So here we go today. We're going to blast through this. I think this will give you some ideas on how 
to sell your own listings, things you've not thought of before. So first, on average, listing agents sell their own listings only three to 9% of the time. And so you know, generally, the lower the price range, the more often a listing agent will sell his or her own listing. And why is that? Probably because in the lower price ranges, there are more buyers and the listing agent is more likely to have a buyer in his or her pocket, someone he or she knows who would be interested in their listing. And so they obviously, when they list that property, they'll give that buyer a call and let that buyer have a first shot looking at the property. We'll talk about that today. The, by the way, at the other end of the spectrum, in the ultra high price range, so then generally as price range increases, the percentage of, list, of listing agents who sell their own listings declines until you get into to the ultra high price range. And that would be, let's say in the seven to $10 million price range and above. And then it starts to, increase again, again, probably because there's just the opposite. There are so few buyers in the, let's say 10, 15, 20, 30, $40 million price range that the agents who handle those listings probably know who those buyers are and go directly to those buyers oftentimes without the need for a co-broke agent. Uh, MLS is virtually an irrelevancy when you get into the ultra high price range properties because buyers come from all over the world. Okay, so that's just a little backdrop on the three to 9%, but typically for your practical purposes, uh, you in the price ranges you deal would should be selling your own listings three to 9% of the time, and that should be closer to 9% if those listings are at the lower end of your market. Okay, so this webinar is going to introduce some strategies. What I'm going to do is introduce some strategies to you that increase the probability you will sell your own listings to between 25 and 50%. And again, that will depend on the price range. That probability should be closer to 50% if your average listings are in the lower end, the very high demand area of price range in your market. So I wanna mention as a foundation to this webinar that the average commission, and I've mentioned this in past webinars, and this has uh, been written up in Inman, the average real estate commission in the U.S. has fallen to 5.24%. It's been falling every year for the past few years, and it's predicted to drop below 5% in the very near future. And I think that's somewhere in the 18 to 24 month range. So most of the downward pressure is on the list side, not the buyer side. And that's because home sellers don't want to discourage buyer, ag buyer agents from showing their homes. And that makes a lot of sense. So what they're doing is they're pounding on you as a listing agent, trying to get you to discount the commission. But that discount is being reflected not in what you offer to buyer agents, but rather in your list side commission. So that means obviously that the average list side commission pres presuming that you're in a market where the co-broke is three percent that's most common i know in some areas i know a lot of places in colorado it's average is 2.8 percent in some other parts of the country you see more predominantly 2.5 percent but for the most part still the majority of homes are offering a three percent co-broke commission that means the average list commission is soon going to drop below one percent so I believe, then that's why I believe this webinar is so important to you. I said it's the second most important webinar I think I've ever done. And that is the winners in future real estate will be those who develop processes to monetize their listings on the buyer side, to sell more of their own listings. And then obviously also uh, attract buyers, good quality buyers from their listings. And those buyers who don't like their listings sell other listings too. But today's webinar is not about that. Today's webinar is actually focused on just helping you actually sell your own listings and earn the buyer side commission on your own listings. So why don't listing agents sell more of their own listings? Well, here are, here's what I think. Number one, I think they have a negative mindset. I don't think, and I think this is a biggie, don't just blow this off. I think for the most part, listing agents don't really believe they can. I think they think it'll be a fluke if they do. I think they feel like, well, maybe I'll get lucky. Maybe I'll get a call on the sign. Maybe I'll get a call on an ad I run, maybe, but they just consider that probably when they list homes, those are likely to sell Cobro. So they have a negative mindset and you can, you're never going to be successful at anything with a negative mindset. I'm sure I do not have to tell you that. So the next reason is no process. Well, because they have a negative mindset, listing agents don't have a process that is a plan to increase the probability that they'll sell their own listings. And I mean, think about it. 
Think about the agents you know, think about yourself. Do you actually have processes? Do you have various things that you think about and you do that you continue to refine and make better that are designed to help you sell your own listings to unrepresented buyers? I doubt you do. You're probably doing, and that's not a criticism, that's just a fact. You're probably doing the same things that most agents are doing around the country when they list property. And the, if you think about it, you'll see here, and I'm just gonna talk to you about a few processes. There are a ton of them that we have and that I use. But I'm just gonna talk to you about a few. And I think the number of agents who do what I'm going to talk to you about today is like less than 1%, uh, way less than 1%. So they don't have a process. Third, if they do have a process, if they do have anything creative, they don't execute on it meticulously and consistently. And consistently is a big deal because most processes, and I want you to hear this, this is really important. Most processes that you'll develop, most of the things, the ideas and the concepts I've developed in the past that have worked spectacularly, haven't worked spectacularly right in the beginning. It takes a while to make things work. It takes a while to figure out how to optimize what your ideas are in order to make them work effectively. So you have to not just think of processes, but you have to execute on them and you have to do it consistently. And there may come a point when you work something and work it and work it and work it, and it just doesn't work and you then toss it out, that's okay. But unless you've worked something diligently and consistently, you can't be so sure an idea, a concept, a process that you develop in any regard to do anything, you can't be so sure that it's not going to work unless you consistently execute on it, try to refine it, and do what Eric Ries says in the Lean Startup, put it out there, and in the beginning, not worry so much about earning from that process, but worry about learning from that process. So it's more about learning than earning in the beginning. Okay, so that's reason number three. Reason number four is a guilt complex. Yes, a guilt complex. Um, almost by definition, a big part of selling your own listings is going to be getting unrepresented buyers in there before what? Before other agents get their buyers in there. Okay, so you're going to be opting out other agents by doing what? Selling your own listings a lot. And that doesn't mean you don't, you bar your listings from being shown by other agents. It just means that you're working like heck to try to come up with buyers and opt them out. I actually think some agents feel almost guilty about that, that they are going to give themselves and as you'll learn later in this webinar, their buyers an advantage over buyers that are with other agents. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. And then number five, what I call the herd complex. Uh, and again, I say this respectfully, but most agents just do what other agents do. I mean, there's kind of certain things we do when we list properties. And I think the reason more agents don't sell their own listings, reason number five is just, well, I'm just doing it the way everybody else does. And I'm just accepting as a given that these are, these are the ways, these are the processes that we should use to sell homes. And I'm also accepting as a given that gee whiz, everybody else is doing it this way, so I should too. Okay, so I want to address this concept of pocket listings because that may come into play here when you see some of these strategies. And that's when to the detriment of your seller, you hide your listings from other agents so you can in earn the entire commission. And I'm not going to belabor that. I think most of you know how that evolved. Maybe not. In a nutshell, pocket, the whole concept of pocket listings evolved when the MLS came into being. Now, my dad, for those of you who don't know, was one of the original founders of the MLS. Yeah, that's how, that's how far back uh, we go in real estate. And uh, I wasn't born at the time, but dad got this idea going. And actually, what am I saying? I was because I must have been born because he got it going. And then by the time, by the time I was think, six, seven, eight years old, I was helping him mimeograph sheets, et cetera. So probably when he had the idea, I actually probably was just had been born. And the whole idea of the MLS, for those of you who don't know, back in the day was that real estate brokers back 50, 60, 70 years ago, they only showed their own listings. There was no co-broking, there was no cooperation. And you didn't even know what other firms had listed unless you happened to see a sign in the yard. 
So think about this. Buyers would shop for homes back then the way buyers shop for cars in today's world. You go around from car lot to car lot to car lot. Well, buyers back in those days would go around from brokerage to brokerage to brokerage and look at those that brokerages, each individual brokerage's listings. If that bro a particular brokerage didn't have the listings you like, just like with a car dealership, you'd go to another brokerage. So Dad, this was a huge advantage for the larger brokers back then. This was a huge disadvantage to the smaller brokers because the smaller brokers only had a small inventory and they had a very difficult time building a big inventory, not just because they were small and they didn't have as many buyers. That would really hurt them. When you go into list a property, you know, you're not able to say like the big firms do that we have all these listings that attract all these buyers. And you know what I'm always telling you guys, he or she who has the listings controls the market. Well, that was really true back pre MLS and that's going to become more true again. But going back to the point here, dad's idea was that to take all oh, the other big disadvantage was the small brokers like my dad would lose agents. Agents would join the small brokers like my dad, but because they only, and when they were brand new, and then the small brokers like my dad before he got large, you know, ended up with a multi office firm, would train brand new agents, get them so they were good, and then the new brokers, the, I'm sorry, the big brokers, the big agencies would pluck them away because there was a lot more inventory for these agents to sell and a lot more opportunity to make money. So dad had this idea and it was called the Cincinnati Property Exchange. And that was where he would go around and he banded together about 45, 50 small brokers. And they agreed to cooperate, show each other listings, essentially band together almost like one firm from the standpoint of not branding like franchising. When Century 21 started franchising, that was banding together a bunch of small firms to make them look larger. That's what franchising was all about. And in real estate, that was invented by Century 21. Really fantastic idea. Uh, yeah, I'm in a small firm. I wear a gold jacket. Uh, there's 38 other small firms in my city. They're all wearing gold jackets. We all look like one firm. We're perceptively bigger, you know, perceptively larger and more important and more formidable to the public. So it's easier to list homes. Well, dad's idea was simply that with respect to having a lot of properties to show and sell. So my point though is that when the MLS started to go national was incorporated, everybody, agents were accustomed to selling their own listings. Everybody was very used to that. You would sell very high percentage of your own listings as the listing agent in the firm because when buyers would come and inquire at your firm, let's say you were with my dad's firm back in the day pre MLS, my dad's small firm, and a buyer would come in and wanted to see one of the listings that buyer was went to you, the listing agent, so you would sell your own listing. So people, agents were used to this, guys. This is really interesting. I think the, the historical aspect of this is really interesting. Everybody was so used to selling their own listings, then when the MLS came into being, that was, you may think that was a positive. It was positive for some people. It wasn't a positive for others. Uh, big listing agents, agents who had a lot of the listings, didn't consider that to be a positive at all. They just considered it something where they were gonna end up having to give away half their commission. So they resisted putting their homes into MLS and would hold them out for weeks and not tell their sellers that this tool existed that could expose their listings to more buyers. And that's what became known as a pocket listing. And that's why they're, they're started to, the MLS has started to institute restrictions to keep agents from doing that. And they should have, they should have instituted those restrictions. Those restrictions in that regard weren't bad because listing agents, and this is the key, this is where you need to hear me, listing agents back then, they were not thinking how can I do certain things to help my sellers sell their home at a higher price? They were thinking, how can I do certain things to help me earn both sides of the commission? And that was wrong. That was selfish. So let me move forward. The bottom line is this webinar is about selling your listings to your buyers to the benefit of your sellers and to the extent that you do pre-marketing, to the extent that you are leveraging certain strategies that are going to create unrepresented buyers who get a first shot at buying your listings. If that is to the benefit of your sellers, then that is a good thing. I don't care what anybody says. Your goal as a listing agent is not to go out and be fair to the real estate industry. Your goal as a listing agent is to get your home sellers homes sold fast and at the highest price. That's what they're paying you to do. 
that's your job. And if you end up earning more because of it, that is you earn both sides of the commission in a way with a process that is better for your seller, then that is totally a win-win. If however, you're selfishly, selfishly holding your listings back to the detriment of your seller, then bad on you. So that's what we're going to talk about today is everything is going to be designed first and foremost to be a benefit to your home sellers. And then if you end up earning both ends of the commission, good for you, you deserve it, you earned it. So giving your buyers an opportunity to see your listings before they're officially offered to the public puts them in a higher price frame of mind. I've talked about this, um, because you earn more isn't bad. You know that if you're a buyer, you think about this, all you guys are in real estate, but pretend you're not, pretend you're a buyer and pretend that you're looking in a certain area in a neighborhood and pretend that some, somebody calls you, an agent calls you, you've signed up with an agent and some agent is trying to, and you've said to this agent, maybe several agents, you said, you get anything that fits what I'm looking for, you give me a call. So some agent does and they say, let's say they're calling me and they say, Greg, hey, guess what? I just got this property sellers in your neighborhood, neighborhood you're looking, price range you're looking, unbelievably cool home. These people are motivated. They really want to sell. They price their home unbelievably. You do this contrast price positioning that I've taught in another webinar. So you give two or three examples of why the home is such an amazing buy, quantitative examples based on what's listed and what's sold out there. I am going to be so excited to see that home. I mean, I'm going to get in my car like right now, no sign, no MLS on the home. I'm the first or one of the first to see it. I am over there right now. So my point to you is that giving, if you do it right, giving buyers, if you have a following of buyers, I'm going to talk to you about that. I'm going to talk to you about how to develop a following of unrepresented buyers who are wanting to get your call. You're not bugging them when you call. They're going to be wanting to get your call, anxious, excited to get your call. And they're, when you, they get your call, they're going to get in the car and they're going to drive over, drive over to see your listings like right now. And that's what you want. That's to your seller's benefit. And also it's to your benefit, obviously. Okay. So five reasons using what I talk about. I'll be talking about this first shot strategy, this first shot strategy, uh, five reasons why it's better for your sellers. First of all, first shot buyers don't know there's no days on the market. And if there were, they don't know them. Let's say it's been eight or nine or 10 or 12 days. Uh, these are pre MLS. I'm going to encourage you to, and you'll talk, you'll see that in the very first process is to convince your sellers of the benefits of allowing you a short window of time to take all these buyers you'll have, you will have these. I'm going to show you how to have unrepresented buyers waiting in the wings the day you list a property, the day you list a property, you're going to have buyers waiting that you can get in touch with that are going to come over and going to want to see that property. So you're going to can talk to your sellers about how you'll need a window, you want a window of opportunity before it's like officially offered to the public. Why? Not to hide it from anybody, but to get these buyers ultimately excited. So there'll be no days on the market and that is a big advantage. You all know my saying, time is acid to the price of a home. Time on the market is acid to the price of a home. Now, actually it's not. Time on the market itself is not, is not detrimental to the price of a home. Buyer's knowledge of time on the market is what's detrimental to the price of a home. And one of the big problems I have with MLS, as you know, those of you that follow me, is that it discloses days on the market and discloses price reductions to buyers. That isn't fair, that isn't right, but my mission, you know, what I'm doing in life isn't going on a mission to change that. I'm just going on a, on a mission to teach you how to not let that cost your sellers money. You know, so, okay, so that's, that's number one. Number two, your first shot buyers pay more because they're excited. You know, when you're excited, you, you make, you, you pay more for things. So you get these people excited. So they don't know days on the market. Number one, number two, they're excited. Number three, when you're dealing directly with buyers, you can communicate more effectively because it's not being filtered through another agent. Uh, now I know some agents worry. They say, oh my gosh, representing both parties, the agency and all this stuff. Guys, I'll talk to you about that a little bit later. That is crazy thinking. The, the, uh, every day of the week, from a practical standpoint, I will every day of the week, in the best interest of my sellers, want to be able to talk directly with buyers. 
it is so much more if you're good if you know what you're doing you can be so much more effective at putting deals together and this is no offense to other agents this is simply the idea that it's your listing and you can communicate you've got to have the confidence in yourself that you can communicate more effectively and have a higher likelihood of likelihood of putting a deal together if you're communicating directly with the buyer uh, number four, you eliminate costs from the transaction. Whether you put that money in your pocket or the seller saves money or you share it, whatever the thing is, I know a lot of agents do a two-tier commission. It's one amount if uh, the home sells co-broke. It's another amount if they sell it themselves, a lower amount. And that makes it, that, there's several advantages there. Number one, you have the opportunity to earn more. Number two, the seller has the opportunity to pay less. And number three, since there's more room in the transaction, since there isn't a two and a half to 3% co-broke in the transaction, there's more room to get a deal together with the seller netting what they want and the buyer paying what they want. And so again, I have no big problem. I'm no, not saying any, no criticism here of the, the 3%, two and a half to 3% co-broke. I'm simply saying when you sell your own listings, there isn't the middleman, there isn't that 3% in the middle. And consequently, there's a higher likelihood that you can make a deal. So you, because you eliminate cost. And number five, you can better assess. I mean, one of the big things that is important in my view is the idea of being able, able to protect your sellers. Because when buyers buy a home, this is one of the things, one of the pro protocols that exists today. And you could say it's good, maybe it is, maybe it's not. Um, I'll comment on that briefly. When typically when buyers buy a home, they have at a minimum an inspection period contingency and they also have a loan contingency. The inspection con period contingency usually is just a walk away. I mean, buyers can dream up whatever they want and walk away. So essentially for whatever the normal time period is in your market, call it 10 days, call it 15 days, buyers are able to tie up a home, take it off the market, and, uh, and then walk away virtually at a whim during the inspection period. I'm not saying most buyers will do that, but some buyers aren't as serious as others. And so your ability to communicate with the buyers, get to know them and assess their seriousness and their financial capability uh, is in my view critical. And also then you have buyers who will take a seller all the way down. I mean, for weeks they get through the inspection, but it turns out they can't get a loan. And in most form contracts, this allows, allows the buyer to walk away with an entire refund of their earnest money. I've got to tell you, I think that's wrong. I think that buyers, at least after the inspection period, should have to put up some part of their earnest money, even if it's just a few thousand dollars, $2,500, something that is non-refundable to the seller if the buyers don't get the loan. I think the buyers should have to say, take some risk that they have assessed that they're capable of getting a loan. And if they don't, that the sellers actually get something out of it because they pulled their home off the market for weeks. The problem is, of course, buyers are so unaccustomed to that. Li buyer agents are so unaccustomed to that, that if you try to counter offer with those kind of provisions, you're likely to blow people out to not make deals just because it's so weird in light of what is normally done. And so it's not that I'm recommending it, I'm because ultimately the whole idea here is to make sure you've got good serious buyers and get homes sold and not do stuff that's going to drive buyers away. Still, from the standpoint of fairness, I do not think it's fair that buyers can tie up homes and then at the last minute walk away without any financial loss, without taking any of the financial risk. Um, okay, so agency relationship, I'll mention it briefly that in most every state's um, there is a there are scenarios that allow you to represent both parties. Um, there's some they're just sometimes they're you you the buyer signs off that you're representing the seller. Sometimes it's dual representation. Sometimes it's a facilitator. Different states have different rules. I'm not going to get into that now. If any of you want to talk to us about that, I am an attorney, as you know, also. And again, I'm not practicing. I'm not going to represent you as attorney. That's my CYA. Um, my team is pretty knowledgeable as well. If you want to schedule a call and you have agency concerns, you can certainly talk to us. But those are also things that are perfectly uh, that those are the kind of things you should be talking to your broker about. Um, but I don't think you should have agency concerns. Just follow the rules. Okay. My view is that you take a facility on these, and I'm going to teach you these strategies. They're coming up now. So that the idea here is this isn't about taking a combative mindset where I'm going to try to uh, take the seller and do take advantage of the buyer. 
um, uh, this is more a situation where the seller wants to sell and the buyer wants to buy. And in my view, your job is getting them reasonable. I mean, if you really look at from a practical standpoint, what we do, isn't it? I mean, think about this. Buyers always want to buy properties lower than they should. Sellers want to sell higher than they should. That's normal. I'll say that if we had buyers and sellers on this webinar today, I'm going to say that to their face. You know, most sellers want more than their homes are worth. Um, most buyers want to buy their homes for less, buy those homes for less, for way below market. The idea, what we're constantly doing is making people reasonable. I'm, you know, you, you may think that because I'm such a seller advocate, trying to get sellers the highest price for their home, that, 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 that I, well, let me back up on it. I am definitely an advocate of trying to get sellers the highest price you can for their home. A lot of times that is talking to sellers about taking a lower price than what they want because the longer it sits on the market, the less it becomes worth because buyers down the road perceive that it's overpriced even if it wasn't. You see my point. So my job, I've always looked at my job uh, not as being combative between a buyer and a seller, even when I'm working with another agent, but really working with everyone to try to facilitate and get everybody's head in the right place. Okay, so let's talk about some strategies. These are just a few of the ones we use. I think you're gonna like these, some strategies that are going to help you sell your own listings. So number one, going back to mindset. This isn't a strategy, this is just mindset. Quantitatively, I want you to make your mind up that you're going to sell at least 25% of your own listings. If you take eight, the next eight listings you take, you're going to at a minimum sell two of them yourself. That's a great way to get started, but you got to make your mind up to that. Remember I said that was one of the big things. I think most listing agents have a negative mindset. They don't think they can. You are going to make up your mind that not only can you, but you're going to, whatever it takes, you're going to find a way at a minimum just to get started. Where I want to take you eventually is selling half of your own listings. You list eight homes, you're going to sell four of them yourself, but let's get started by saying the next eight you list, you're going to sell to yourself, to unrepresented buyer. So how are we gonna do this? Um, and I've already talked to you about that. I think the future of real estate is going to go to those who control the listing inventory to attract and monetize the buyer side inventory. So a few processes we developed at 990sells at 990agent.com. And you know, I think all of you that follow me know what I teach and what we do. This is actually the business model I teach. Uh, that you list homes, and you can check that out at 990sells.com, that's the consumer website, or 990agent.com, that's the agent website where you can actually go check it out, see what we do, watch the video. But the whole idea is, um, my view, is that agents today have an amazing golden opportunity, that the list commission is coming down and eventually will come down to virtually nothing. Your opportunity is to go out there and be everything you are. Be amazing. Be the best tra traditional agent you know how to be, but to offer sellers what they want even more than that. They want more money in their pocket. So to offer them an irresistible list side commission, and that's what we do at 990 Sales. It's a $990 flat fee list side commission, which is irresistible. And we talk to sellers about how they not only save money with this, but it actually gives them more room with a $990 list side commission. It gives them more room to get their home sold and still net what they want. So they can even give up some of that to the buyer. So the buyer ends up getting a better deal and they still end up netting more. And we also talk to them about what we, and you'll, you'll see this on our website, it's pretty cool, about how sometimes, and I know I've been there, I've done it, about how paying a listing agent too much, paying, we'll call it one and a half, two, two and a half, three percent, 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars on the list side can actually make for what we call lazy listers. Agents who list homes, list homes, list homes, but don't bust their butt every day trying to sell them. And you see the purpose of this webinar, this is what's so cool, is showing you strategies you can use that when you list homes, you can actually sell those homes. Instead of spending time working on getting another listing, you'll actually know what to do. You'll have creative process, creative ways that you can work on selling your own listings. And so the idea behind just FYI 990sells and 990agent.com is offering the sellers an irresistibly low list side commission. Nothing that we expect to make any serious money on, on the silly 990s, that isn't the point. It's high enough to cover 
our costs of marketing and make us a small profit and we're transparent with sellers there. The idea is to, when we tell sellers, what we want to do is go out and try to find a buyer for your home. And that's why I have developed these processes that I'm teaching all you guys, even though you know, you're not, most many of you are not in 990. The whole idea is that's how we monetize over at 990. We either sell our own listings and earn the two and a half to three percent, or we have all these buyers that are attracted by our listings. They may not like our listing, so we sell someone else's listing and make the two and a half, three percent. So that's what that's all about, and that's why I've gone so deep. You might wonder, well, why have you spend so much time, so much focus, Greg, on creative processes to sell one's own listings because the whole business, I believe the whole future of real estate is going to be that. And my, the business model that I teach agents and give them this whole business in a box is designed with that in mind that you sell your own listings, listings attract buyers. And the idea is that you're going to monetize the buyer side because that's going to hold for a long time. You're going to monetize the buyer side by selling your own listings or by selling other firms listings. If the people just flat out, the buyers just flat out don't like, your property. So process one, uh, obviously, and I talked about this before, this is the foundation. You want to convince sellers to give you, let's say two weeks. Let's just use, now I have a 29 day home launch formula. I'm going to talk to you about that. I obviously show you where you can read about that, but easier to get started just with two weeks, two weekends actually to be more precise for, for sellers to give you two weekends to pre-market the home, build anticipation, build excitement, show it to people who get a chance, show it to buyers who will have a chance to do private previews. It's not like you're, you're barring other agents. Other agents want to show it, that's fine. But your focus is to get your buyers in there, unrepresented buyers in there, people who are following you. You're going to learn how to do this. People who are waiting for you to call them people who are waiting for your next new listing to come up for you to get them in there to see this, to give them a first shot, a first shot at buying the property. So you convince sellers. And if you want to learn some of the talk tracks, just Google me Forbes magazine and 50 times. Now don't, don't smile when I say this actually take 30 minutes. It's only about a 45 second read. So take four, 30 to 45 minutes, read that article. I know you won't do this. I know I'm just, just, you know, just saying this, but, but you should, you won't, but you should, you should read. In fact, we teach one of the things I teach all my agents across the country in 990 cells is to take our home seller brochure, which explains this perfectly to home sellers, all the reasons why they should list on our 990 program over and above just saving money. And I, tell our new agents who come into the program every day, read that brochure 50 times minimum. That's how you get started. You just read it over and over, shut off the phones and read it over and over. You want to learn how to persuade sellers to give you a window of time, a pre-marketing time, why it's better for them. We're not talking about selfish for you, why it's better for them to do that. Just read this article 50 times over and you'll have that nail. Okay. So that's the first thing. One of the key key foundational strategies is to have some window of time when the home isn't perceptively officially on the market. No sign in front of it, right? Like in the first few days, we're actually going to go to a sign strategy and definitely not an MLS because buyers love to see homes that they perceive. Buyers love to see homes that they perceive are not officially on the market or not an MLS yet. It's a great way to get buyers excited, a great way to get buyers to engage and to write an offer and to make a deal before a home goes in MLS. So process two, the private sale yard sign. Now, all you guys are probably using a pretty a standard for sale sign. I recommend you have a special sign, a pre-MLS sign, and this isn't coming soon. I don't get this coming. I mean, I get what coming soon is all about, but I think it's frankly corny. I mean, coming soon implies to buyers that the home isn't on the market. Coming soon. I mean, whatever. It's not what you want. What you want is for buyers to, to send the message that they can see it. It's something they can see, but it's something that maybe they've just seen this sign and very few have, and it's not officially on the market. I call it our private sale yard sign. Now what I'm going to show you and, and why? Because serious buyers scour their neighborhoods, their favorite neighborhoods all the time every weekend. So kind of what you would do is something like this. 
you would have the sign, and this could even be a sign. This doesn't have to be a sign that's like um, that you would have a sign company put up. I know in many, many, most states now, you don't actually put your own signs in. Uh, you actually have sign companies put them up, but you can buy some of these. Remember the old signs, guys, of those of you that go way back where we used to actually have one of the coolest things I ever remember doing is when I was newer in the business and I would list property. It was so fun. I would carry for sale signs in the trunk of my car. And when I listed a property, I mean, the very first thing I do was go out in the yard and put that and have the sellers there. And I'd say, you know, put the sign in the yard. And I mean, you know, this is pre cell phone days. I mean, there were many times where calls from buyers before I would ever get back to the office who would see the sign. So the process you want to follow is going to be number one, get this, we'll call it two weekend pre-marketing. So let's start there get a two weekend pre-marketing and pre-marketing simply means pre MLS, pre MLS marketing. It gets buyers all wicked up when they have a chance to see homes that aren't officially in MLS. And also you're not tracking days on the market, which is great. So then before you put this private sale sign, what I'm going to show you the wording here in a minute, before you all just flip it over there. Now, the, this is just in, just the wording, you know, you obviously craft this and you put it on a metal sign, not a wooden sign. Uh, if you want to carry it out there and put it up. But the idea is then, then before you put up this sign, you will get your buyers, the buyers, your first shot buyers. We're going to talk about those in a minute and I'm going to teach you a couple of ways to develop them. You're going to give them a call, give them a chance to get in the property. Then if one of them doesn't buy it, you hear that jet go over here. It's like, it's just like on the top of our house. Yeah. It's like wanted to land on the roof as Roseanne just said. So then, then, if those buyers aren't takers, you put this sign up and, uh, and you make sure you have it up for like uh, that, you know, a weekend, at least one weekend, and maybe two. And of course, um, and so what do you want to say? Something like new, new, new. So everybody likes what's new. So you have like the new messaging on it. So this is just the, t the kind of messaging you want to have on it. You want to have the newness brand new on the market, new, new, new. I just put new, new, new on this. I thought it was kind of fun. Private sale, not an MLS. That's like really great. Now you could say instead of below market and below market, don't let sellers get all upset about, oh my gosh, below market and all this stuff. You want to, your job as a listing agent is whatever the list price is, is to try to try to portray that as an amazingly good price. So below market, uh, but you could say motivated sellers, excited sellers, um, want to sell now, anything kind of in that space, whatever kind of, you know, the idea is this whole idea, the messaging here, this is, this is the three big messages you want to get across on the sign. Uh, we do this in a variety of ways, but one is the newness message. Okay. The newness message. And this is, and I got to tell you, these signs work major league guys. So you want to do this. These signs don't cost much. Just buy the metal signs that you can put in yourself. Uh, and so you can put it in and then take it out. So you want to have the newness messaging. Then you want to have the private non MLS messaging there. However, you want to say that. And then you want to have the uh, messaging that conveys. It's a great deal. I mean, you know, like sellers say, sell now, you know, sell now below market, just something to express in two or three or four words. Okay. So that is one process. You're missing the boat. If you, if you don't, when you list properties, if you don't get a short window of pre-marketing, pre-MLS marketing time and put one of these signs up to generate buyers, particularly in high demand neighborhoods, oh, you are, that alone is worth the time right here that you've just spent in this webinar because you need to go buy these signs. You need to really make them look cool. They're going to have your branding on them. And you need to, you try this and you watch the calls that are going to come in to you. And um, I, oh, let me just, okay. I also want to mention, I mentioned this later on. It wasn't the next slide that there are a lot of buyers more than ever who float around alone. The internet has created a scenario where, as you know, buyers don't have to go to real estate agents to find out what's on the market. It's all right there. And so you get a lot of buyers who free float without agents. This is an enormously good source of unrepresented buyers for you. And they're always scouring on Saturdays and Sundays, particularly the neighborhoods that most interest them. 
You cannot not do this sign. I'm going to say that again. You cannot not have one of these signs. You should use it with every new property you list until it goes into MLS. And hopefully, like we said, 25 to 50% of the time, it is when it goes in MLS, it's going to go in as a sold because you're going to have sold this thing before it even hits MLS. And think what that's going to do for your average time on the market, which you can then use later on when you're listing property to show sellers how little time your average home, your average listing sits on the market. And then obviously that translates into what? Time is on the market hurts the price of a home. So you can talk to sellers about how you sell homes faster and at a higher price. Okay, so that's process uh, that's that. That's process number two. Actually, number one is just the foundation to have this pre-marketing period. Then uh, process two, really, that's really, this is process one. Okay, so the next process, process three, your first shot buyers. Okay, first shot buyers. Now, let me talk to you about this. So this, the idea here is to build a list of buyers who want to know about your listings before they're offered to the public. Okay, so this is called first shot buyers. Now you say, all right, that's great. I mean, no, you got to be sitting out there and saying, you got it. You, you want this, right? I mean, how do you not want this? Don't you wish today that you, I mean, it helps you list property. You go out to list a home and if you have a, you're not going to show the names, but you don't want to be disgenuine. So, uh, so you really want to have, them. you don't want to make up stuff. So you show like six different buyer uh, profiles of buyers uh, who are looking for homes in the price range and in the neighborhood where you're sitting on the listing. I mean, how do you not get this listing? I mean, so it's also an amazing listing tool, not to mention a great tool to help you sell your own listings to the benefit of your sellers and of you. So this is first shot buyers. You build a list of buyers who wanna know about your new listings before they're offered to the public. So uh, first of all, you can't believe how effective just marketing this insider strategy. Buyers, every, you know, there's the old insider trading on the stock market. Everybody's aware about that. So the best homes are sold to insiders. Uh, that is oftentimes true. Some of the best homes just fly off the market before anybody has a chance to get over there. Buyers are aware of that, particularly in today's world, in the lower, mid to lower price ranges, in high demand areas. I mean, buyers are losing homes day in and day out. So this idea of becoming an insider, so that's something we can uh, teach you. I can't, this webinar, I could spend the whole webinar on the exact strategy, setting up this become an insider strategy. Here's another one, looking for a home, see the best listings before anyone else, before anyone else sees them. So I could, uh, I could spend, again, a whole webinar just on this process here. Let me, uh, let me pop down here, just let me go back. There we go. Um, about, this is the same thing, this is the same process. This, this is just two different forms of ads to attract buyers to sign up with you in order to see the homes that they're, to be the first to see homes that, that are available before they're offered to the general public. So if you're interested in learning this particular strategy in depth, I'm gonna to go to the next one here. You can just go to 990agent.com, sign up for the half hour, and we'll take you through this in more detail. Um, okay, so that is one. This whole idea of building buyers, and you, this is not even hard. Don't think this is hard because it's not. There are tons of buyers. This is what they're loving and that th you're not going to bug them. You're not driving them around. You're not, all you're going to do is let them know when you get a property, when you end up getting a property that what? That fits their criteria and they're going to be the first to come in and get a chance to look at it. So now, wait till you hear this, hear this next strategy. You're going to love this. So this is the fourth and last one for the webinar today. And so there's that. So process four, what we call our reverse, reverse search list. This is like a buyer magnet, guys. This, is a, this, this was worth the price of the webinar. And I don't mean the money price because you guys are on this for free. I mean the time price. This process for this reverse search list. Now, I started doing this back, oh gosh, 20, 25 years ago with my son, Corey, uh, my son Casey is in the business with me right now. Corey is running a company called Flex Ground uh, that uh, I initially was a partner in. It's the large, if you guys are 
uh, any of you are looking for protective playground surfacing, FlexGround is the largest provider now. I'm so proud of my son, Corey, the largest provider of protective playground surfacing in the Western US. And it's called FlexGround. The office is in Nevada, California, here in Arizona. And uh, my son and his partners, of which I was one to get it started, uh, were um, uh, got that going. In any case, I'm off subject. I just get talking about my kids and I can't help it. So, uh, but I'm working with uh, Casey and of course, Brian, as you know, is one of our Maverick trainers working with Brian, my oldest son and Casey, my youngest son. He's actually selling real estate. Brian is doing amazing training. All of you who are any part of Mavericks or taking any training from us, you have to know Brian. And uh, okay, so sorry. Process four, reverse search list. So you let buyers know you will send their needs to hundreds of unlisted sellers in the neighborhoods those buyers are looking. And I wanna show you one that, we, uh, that we're doing right now. I'm gonna actually show you that in a minute. I'm gonna show you a form here and then show you what we're doing right now. So this right here is an ad, reverse home search, looking for a home, let the sellers find you, learn more. And then it goes to a landing page where it's explained. Again, you can schedule a call where we can explain this to you in more detail. I want you to get the concept here in the webinar. The idea is that you will actually take buyers and go out and find them an unlisted home. This is really cool. They really love this, particularly in areas where there's a lot of demand and not enough supply. So you actually search. So this is a way not, as they say, just to accumulate buyers who are looking for homes. And obviously these buyers who sign up on your reverse search are also going to be what we're gonna call the first shot buyers because when you list homes, you're going to give them first shot. Not even homes that of people who inquired because of your looking for these buyers, but I mean just normal homes you list, if they fit parameters, these, so these reverse search buyers are also what we're gonna call that process three, um, your first shot buyers, okay? You, you follow me there. So the idea here is looking for a home, we have a private sellers looking for serious buyers. So the idea here is, is that you will actually go out and I'm gonna show you something here. So this is something that we developed and um, you can, you can uh, we're glad to send you this. Nope, nope, you know, if you don't want to, can't read it. Um, this is, this would go out into a community. So hello, Greg. We have qualified, motivated buyers looking, and this goes out to home sellers and home owners in a community. We have qualified, motivated buyers looking in the following neighborhoods and price points. To talk about selling your home to one of our buyers, give us a call and there's the number. You can net more because our commission is significantly less on these one-off sales. And you can afford to do that. You can afford, these are just like one-off sales you're gonna make. So you can afford to charge whatever, you know, 3% or 4, 3% plus 990, that's what we charge, et cetera. And then you list there, we have qualified buyers for, and that three to four bedrooms, by the way, in Paradise Valley, Paradise Valley is our high-end community here. So um, there are no three to four bedroom homes for 500, 575. Uh, we just, this is just used for uh, example purposes, obviously. Then look at the bottom, looking for a home. So you're also going after buyers here. Become a 990 VIP buyer. And obviously you guys can adjust the wording to yourself. I'm just giving you great wording here. No cost, no obligation. It's an easy way to find your perfect home. Look at the wording here. Start by telling us what you're looking for. We'll send an email alert to owners of not listed homes in your preferred neighborhood and price range. When owners express an interest in selling, you will have first opportunity to see their home before it's offered to the public. And then to register, call here. You can also have a click and a landing page. I mean, this is designed to be sent out actually. You will get a great response. You get a seller response on this. You get a buyer response on this. I mean, you could, I'm not kidding you when I tell you, you could make a living. You could make a living just doing this. This one reverse home search strategy. And the combination of this idea that get, having these first look buyers, these first look buyers who get first shot, these first shot buyers, using that uh, and integrating that with this, I mean, you will sell your own listings like crazy. Now I want to, before I go to that, I want to, show you this because, um, and actually I'm gonna have to go off a of screen share. So I wanna show you this. This is one that we're using right now. Now this is a personalized um, uh, letter that would go out, not a letter, this is a personalized flyer that would we would mail out, distribute into a community. This is one we're actually using. These are buyers we have 
they're in the $600,000 price range. I'm just using this as, you know, by the way, besides training, I do this stuff. I mean, I work with our agents. We sell, we actually sell houses. And uh, that's why I'm a little bit different than the normal coach trainer. I actually do this stuff and love it. So this is, um, these are some people who are looking for a $600,000 home. They have two children and the children has, uh, have a new puppy. In fact, they relocated here from another uh, city. Uh, these buyers did just recently. And uh, as part of, um, uh, I won't say a bribe, in, in order to make their kids okay with the relocation, they promised them a new puppy. And when they uh, got here, they got them a new puppy here in Arizona. So they are looking for a home around $600,000 in a community here. And this is what we're actually sending out. And you can see it's got their uh, names on it, uh, the names of the kids, Alex and Sydney, and the dog's name is Mandy. And I'll read you this, but this is what this looks like. This is a personalized one, unlike that more corporate looking one. Can you see that and see that and see how the kids sign? And we've done this kind of thing in the past, by the way. This is so effective. It's scary. It goes out to hundreds of homeowners in the neighborhood. And I'll read it to you here. And then if you'd like a copy of this, I couldn't, I couldn't get this into a slide. It's just too big. So um, it says at the top, please help us move to your neighborhood. And then, and these are the kids talking now, okay? So here's the, here's the photo of the kids. You can see that they're on the camera, okay? And their dog. Our names are Alex and Sydney, and this is our new puppy, Mandy. Our family recently moved to Arizona from the East Coast. Last week, we looked at a home in your neighborhood and instantly knew that that's where we wanted to live. The owners decided not to sell the home we we're looking at. And actually what happened is the owners decided to lease it rather than sell it. That was unfortunate. Um, and so we're hoping to find another one. If you have any interest in selling your home, will you please call our agent? And the agent here is Casey Haig. Um, that's where this is one that my son is using um, with Maverick Real Estate in case he has his number. And then, uh, and then our family is renting a home now and we have a nice landlord who is flexible about when we move. So if you might want to sell, but don't want to move, quite yet, that's okay too. And if you're not interested in selling, we hope to be your neighbors soon. Um, we've done this kind of thing um, many times in the past, Roseanne and I and our agents, and I've got to tell you, it is remarkably effective. Okay, so to review the uh, processes real quickly, and then we'll finish up here. You obviously want to talk your home sellers into you want to get the right mindset. You want to talk to your home sellers and want them to understand the importance of giving you a window of time. Um, then a window of time to sell the home. You want to use the sign. This sign is so effective that I just showed you. You want to have spend the money to have one of the have a few of these signs that you use. Then you want to have this first shot buyer process uh, where buyers are waiting for you to call to let them know about the listings that you come up with. And uh, we can teach you in more depth how to do that. And, uh, and then let me, and then the last one of course, is this reverse home search. So let me finish up here. Where are we here? Oh, I wanna finish up with that. And that is you win some, you lose some. What matters are the relationships you establish along the way. Um, whoops, there we go. That's not what we want. So we're going back to the slide thing here. So I want to let you know that if you um, would like um, to learn about what I do and I teach, um, I want to mention to you that anyone can charge less and earn less. That's discount real estate. This is my little pitch now, okay? Uh, smart businesses find ways to charge less and earn more. Amazon did it, Uber did it, and that is what we are doing at 990sales and 990agent.com. So this is my advertisement, okay? So if you wanna take, and you may not think you can, but you can, in 90 days, after 90 days, I can have you taking 20% of the listings in any market you choose. If it's a bread and butter market, uh, one where there's a lot of demand, uh, hands down, in the fourth month after you get started, you don't have to spend a lot of money, I can have you taking 20% of the listings in your market and earning an average of 3% on each. And I mean that, earning an average of 3% on each. If you're interested in knowing how, uh, just check it out there at 990agent.com. 990sales is our consumer website. 990agent is our realtor website where you can go in and sign up. And by the way, if you decide to sign up on 990agent.com, you decide to sign up on 990agent.com, and you want to spend the half hour and you want to talk about some of the things that I talked about today in the webinar, 
that's okay. Anything you want to talk about during that half hour is totally cool with us. We do not try to sell you anything. We're really proud of what we've got here. We believe it's the future of real estate, uh, but the half hour is not designed for us to spend a half hour trying to convince you to buy this, what we call business in a box. It is designed to get to know you, meet you, and help you with anything that is on your mind. Well, with that being said, this is Greg Haig, and I am going to finish this webinar the way I finish them all, and that is by saying, I salute the Maverick in you. I hope you enjoyed, and by the way, if you enjoyed what you saw in this webinar, something you could really do for me that I would totally appreciate, and that is go to my LinkedIn, Greg Haig on LinkedIn, and go into either Real Estate Mavericks, that business, or 990 Sales, doesn't matter, and leave me a recommendation. Uh, and just say, hey, Greg, I love it, or Greg, you stunk, I didn't like, whatever you want to say, just say something. Isn't that way in life? Just do something, say something. Greg Haig on LinkedIn, and with that, I will finish by saying I salute the Maverick and you. Have an amazing week. Bye-bye.